I'm Dr. Thad Botham, and in this brief logic lecture, we're going to discuss two inference patterns, two inference forms, argument forms, one called a reductio, or reductio ad absurdum argument form, and the other, the indirect proof argument form. And we'll note the difference between the two, even though they look strikingly similar. So in this little lecture, we're going to do about five things. First, I'm going to review the difference between valid inferences and invalid inferences. If you need more instruction on this, consult my logic lecture validity. Then we'll entertain a thought experiment to underscore the power of using these argument forms, because they are quite powerful and used quite a bit in philosophy and in quite a few other areas uh, in academic literature. And then we'll take them in turn. We'll discuss and diagram the reductio argument form first. And then we'll discuss and diagram the indirect proof argument form and note their differences. And then I'll talk through an example. And that's about it. So let's get started and review validity. The best way that I have to describe what an invalid argument form is, or an invalid inference, is there is a WTF, and this is the this is technical machinery here. The W stands for a possible world, or a complete consistent situation, or just a consistent situation will do, where the premises are true, while the conclusion is false. WTF. So a valid argument is a situation in which there is no consistent situation in which the premise or premises are true while the conclusion is false. That would be impossible in a valid argument to have true premises with false conclusion. All right, so much for validity. Consider this thought experiment. Suppose you had a valid argument, you knew it was valid, and it looks like this. Here we have a set of premises, three, for one conclusion, and all of the inferences were valid. So no WTF, no possible situation in which all of the premises are true while the conclusion is false. Given that, what about one? True or false? It's going to be false if it's impossible for all of the premises to be true while the conclusion is false, when there's a valid argument, really brings into sharp relief that at least one premise is false. And this is the signature feature of both the reductio argument strategy as well as the indirect proof argument strategy. The idea is, hey, let's just assume for sake of argument this claim we're talking about and then draw valid inferences and we may introduce should we like any other truths we don't have to introduce other truths but we may help ourselves to those but if we're clear that all the truths that we introduce are clearly true and all the inferences are valid and we generate we derive a false conclusion we can be sure that premise, that assumption, is false, and that's the point. So if you want to show a claim is mistaken, assume it, have valid inferences for a false conclusion. So here's the reductio ad absurdum argument form. For the assumption, you deny the claim you want to show. So the strategy here is we want to, in the end, show that this proposition and p here, I'm assuming you, we have a little symbolic logic under our belt, this variable p can denote any proposition or claim whatsoever. It can be very complicated, but the idea is this assumption says it is not the case that that claim is true. It is not the case that proposition p is true. And you flag it, assume for a reductio, and along the way you may introduce any truths 
Now you don't need to introduce any other truths, but you're certainly welcome to. We just need to make sure they are true. No counterexamples to those claims. And we derive, through valid inferences, a contradiction. That's the clearest example of something that's obviously false. The most obvious falsehoods are those that are direct contradictions. So uh, that's what I insist on uh, the last line right before you conclude what you denied in the beginning. And you cite it this way. Completes reductio and you cite all the lines in between. So this whole argument block is cited. One through all these. So this, there might be three lines, there might be no li there may be no lines. It might go from one straight to the conclusion or it may be very complicated in between but when you complete the reductio it's what logicians call discharging the assumption. We may assume we may conclude that that proposition is true. So this is the di diagrammatically what a reductio argument form looks like. So what's the difference between a reductio and an indirect proof? One striking similarity. See if you can see what it is. The striking similarity is you assume the proposition. You don't deny it or reject it. Now this itself may be a negation, a denial. But what we conclude is we add at the end not outside. Suppose this is true. Da -da 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 -da. Contradiction, valid inferences. Therefore it's not true, whatever that was. Now, it turns out that of these two argument strategies, uh, indirect proof is absolutely uncontroversial. Uh, virtually no one disputes the validity of this inference form, whereas reductio, there is a group of logicians called intuitionist logicians who, re who uh, do not endorse reductio as a valid inference form. But if you're in my course, I don't mind. You can use either one. Those who claim that the reductio argument form, I'll go back to it, is a valid argument form. Those are called classical logicians. And those who deny it are called intuitionist logicians or intuitionists. But no one, even classical logicians, intuitionists alike, disputes this inference form. So this is the one to go to. Let's look at an example. Suppose for sake of argument that there is no mammal, there, none of them exist that ever produce offspring by laying eggs. Many people believe this, but let's just assume it for sake of reductio. But then we come across a platypus laying an egg, and a platypus is a mammal, or a Echidna, I guess that's how you say it. These two types of mammals sometimes produce offspring by laying eggs, and this is just an empirical fact. And we put these two together. We validly infer one and two with a conjunction. This is a valid inference form. All we did is uh, combined one and two. It's impossible for 1 and 2 to both be true while 3, that conjunction, is false. But notice 3 is obviously a contradiction. It's absurd. So we discharge our original assumption. It said there is no mammal. We discharge it. We cite the entire block. And we get to conclude this. We only introduced other truths. That's number two. We made all valid inferences. And so we may reject our assumption. All right, that's it.